Welcome to our lecture online. Before we start looking at each of the four Galilean moons separately, let's talk about the formation of the four moons. And it turns out there are a lot of similarities between the formation of the four Galilean moons and the formation of the solar system. So let's take a look at some of those similarities. So here we have basically the solar system where we have the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, the asteroid belt, and the four gas planets. And here we have Jupiter and the four Galilean moons. First of all, we recognize that for both systems, we have decreasing density with distance. And even though it may not be purely that way for the planets, Mercury has an average uncompressed density, a greater uncompressed density compared to Venus and Earth because it has a greater proportion of metal. However, because of the compression of the, due to the size of the Earth and Venus, they do have a greater density than Mercury. But again, if you just pure look at the content of the material, you'd see the decreasing density. And you see the very same thing over here. We have a decreasing density for the four Galilean moons with distance. Secondly, we also see that most of the, war the water formed far away from the sun in the outer solar system. Here again, when you take a look at the moons, we realize that Ganymede and Callisto have a much greater proportion of ice compared to the first two moons. Even though Europa is known as the ice moon or the ocean moon or the water moon, for the total moon, we'd have a lot more ice contained within Ganymede and Callisto in relation to the size of the moon compared to Io or Europa, just like we see more ice further away from the sun in the solar system. Of course, much of that water came back to the Earth in the form of comets, so therefore the Earth now has oceans. We presume that Mars and Venus and Mercury also at some point had a lot more water from impacts, but of course that water has escaped primarily. Then we look at the spacing, and it turns out we see increasing spacing as we go further and further out, from Mercury to Venus to Earth to Mars, asteroid belt, and the gas planets are all farther and farther and farther spaced apart. And we see the very same thing between the moons from Io to Europa. There's a distance of about 350,000 kilometers, a distance of about 400,000 kilometers, and a distance of a little bit over 800,000 kilometers. So we see that increasing spacing between the moons, just like we see in the solar system. Also, we can presume that the planets formed from a disk of material around the sun. And in the same way, we can presume that the material, that the, the moons were formed from a disk of material that at first was a lot of debris around Jupiter, especially since Jupiter was so large as it formed, it pulled a lot of material in that was in the solar system. It coalesced into a disk of material and then slowly over time, those larger pieces ended up coming together and gravitationally started pulling in the smaller pieces so that eventually they formed the four moons just like a similar process happened when the solar system was formed. And again, we can presume that is correct. Also notice that the orbital direction of all the planets is in one direction, looking from the north down. We see everything moving around the sun in a counterclockwise direction. We see the same for the moons around Jupiter. All the moons revolve around the planet in a counterclockwise direction. And we can also see that the rotational direction is the same for all the moons, looking from north down is counterclockwise. And for the solar system, by and large, that's the same as well. Most objects are rotating counterclockwise about their axis. Some exceptions such as Venus, but we believe Venus was turned upside down. And we also have the planet Uranus, which also probably was tilted over because the direction of the moons is that way. So it, it, we presume that there was something that happened that caused the planet turnover. And of course, we have what we call the dwarf planet Pluto, which also is all past that axis, it tipped over past its 90 degree point. But except for those exceptions, we can see that all the planets in the solar system rotate in the same direction and just like the moons around Jupiter. So again, the way in which the moons were formed was probably very, very similar to the way the solar system was formed from an, a disk of material, kind of an accretion disk of material. And as that went around the planet, uh, slowly that coalesced into the four current four moons. And that is the similarity that we see between the Jupiter system and the solar system. 
And then you begin to think, is that something that's common between all systems around the galaxy and the universe? And we can assume that that would be the case in most places, that very similar processes took place in many other solar systems in our own galaxy and in other galaxies around us. And that is the interesting part of studying astronomy.